three stocks at a 52 week low. You're going to want to hear the third one because I actually own that third stock and we're going to run our stock analyzer tool on it. But these are three stocks that are 52 week low. We're going to go through them a little bit high level. And the third one will get into more detail because I actually own it. First company, Hershey. What does Hershey do, Mo? Chocolate? Have you ever been to Hershey, Pennsylvania? No. I hear I, it actually smells like chocolate. Mm-hmm. Tim's been there. My, he says it my smells mom like chocolate. Loves it there. Does she? Yeah. It's pretty cool from what I understand. Really? All right. So Hershey stock, 52 week high, 276, 52 week low, one. Oh, it's actually there right now. 198.85. All time high was also the one year mark ago, but uh, May of this year. Hmm. So Hershey is a 40. $1 billion market cap business. Buying all the shares outstanding. PE of 23 might be okay. Because guess what, guys? A 23 PE, but on a company like Hershey. I mean, if I told you right now, here's $41 billion, go compete with Hershey. You're not doing it. That would be very, very difficult. I yeah. agree, Mo. Think about how many other chocolate companies out there that are big, but are not on this level. Yeah. Look at these margins too, Mo. I like these margins. Pretty good. Dividend yield, 2%. They can easily afford it because $827 million, it's about half of their um, free cash flow. Look at this return on invested capital, 22. Wow. That's pretty good. Oh, boy. Oh, actually. Oh, boy. I'm going to make note here, guys, that I'm going to make the request that we do a vi- separate video on Hershey because I want to do a, um, a more in- in-depth analysis on Hershey. And so we're going to do that. So make sure you uh, watch our, for our channel, do a more in-depth on Hershey because I like it. So far what I see, let's go look at the eight pillars. Good ROIC, but declining ROIC. Oh, did you go to the... I'm, uh, I'm, I'm right here. You can just see over the last okay. 10 years. So good ROIC still. Don't get me wrong. But look at this, Mo. The eight oh, pillars wow. here. Wow. The two things that we love, just wow. the valuation metrics. Wow. Yeah. It's quite surprising. Yeah. I like this. Do I have this on my watch list? I don't think I do. Oh, I have it on my oh, watch list. Oh, I do list. have it on my watch list. What's, the, what's your price? 120. Mine's 100. Okay. Interesting. I don't know if I'm being fair. Let, let's look that up when I did this. I'm starting, I'm guessing I'm not being fair with that price. Yeah, that it's seems kind of low. Shares. Oh, this is back in November I did this. 20. Oh, what am I doing here with my PE? No way. What'd you flip? I did 14, 16, and 18. Now you got to give him a premium. Oh, definitely have to give him a premium. So let me do that real quick. Oh, and look at my desired return. Oh, I'm just being a jerk. Wonder. Yeah, I got to change this. I was being too picky, guys. And this is part of my process that over time, I've decided to pay more for better quality businesses. All right, well, no, I'm still at 120. My middle price is still 122. All right, so maybe I'll add it. Maybe I'll change it to 130. That way I can sell puts or 135. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change it on my on my watch list so the software notifies me when it hits 135. I'm not going to buy it at 135. I'm going to do more research, probably go into our community and talk about it more, and also sell puts at lower prices so I can get paid to wait. So they have a crock that's coming out, okay. as you can see right here. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that thing. I need those. That that's should, incredible. That should boost their ROIC alone. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Oh, that's awesome. All right, company number two, Discover Financial Services. Now, guys, this company involves a lot of banking, so it's a little harder to do evaluation on there. Oh, wow, it's up 6.7% today. Wow. Yeah. I wonder why. Wow, 3.2% dividend. Only, only, look at this, Mo. Their dividend is $727 million, and if you believe their free cash flow is $6 billion, that's a very low number. Mo, we got to figure this out. I know. This is a tough one because it, it just... It, it's looked so appealing for the Look last three PE. years. 6 PE, 7 PE, price of free cash flow 3.4. I know. Darn it, Mo. This thing was $23 back in When we March. were selling puts at 20. Yep. March of 2020. Yep. We were selling t- puts at 20 going, oh, maybe it'll go lower, and then it skyrocketed from there. Skyrocketed. See, this is a tough one, guys. So you might sit there and this go, well, Paul, it's so cheap, but this is more banking and we don't understand banks very well. Mm-hmm. So what I'd love is if you're somebody who understands banks, if you are an analyst or you're a CFO of a bank, please reach out to us. We need to understand banking more. We need to understand how to evaluate a bank because banks have very funny. We should reach out to our banking friend and ask him great, about Discover Financial. Idea. I'll, I'll make a note to do that. Why don't right you now. do that? Because we do have a banking friend who's an analyst, but unfortunately he works for a fund, so he can't come on the show. He can't really do much. And 
you know, we don't want to bog him down with too much of his time. Um, but this, this is a lot of discover. The good news is discover has a lot of credit card payments, but they also have a lot of loans. Yes. So it's about understanding those loans. Like if you look right here, the market cap is 23 billion. Their enterprise value is 120. Right. That screams banking right there. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yep. That's the big difference. But look at this dividend, 3.2%. That means when it was at $20 a share, it'd be equivalent to like a 10% dividend yield. No, actually higher than that. That's incredible. Ugh. We'll email Ugh. him. We'll email him. We'll All right. figure this out. Company number three. Now remember, I own this company, so it does not mean you should go buy it. You should do your own research. I've done my own. My goals, Mo's goals are totally different in how we invest. So do not buy just because I own it. And the good news is there's a lot of negative sentiment about the company. So hope you're probably not going to buy anyhow. And it is PayPal. PayPal is <gasps> low. 59. 50, yeah, I know. 56.53 was their low. Just on Friday. Wow. Or was it Thursday? Wow. Yeah. Wednesday. 27th? Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. I don't wow. know my days of the week. All time high, less than a little over two years ago, 310 a share. Wow. Now 56. Paul, you don't get it when it was at 310. Paul, you don't get it when it's at 56. That's what I always say, guys. Being a value investor means you always have to appear to be wrong because when stocks are flying high, you're saying it's overpriced. People say you don't get it. When stocks are falling, they say, Paul, you don't get it. It's not as good a company as you think. In fact, somebody on Twitter the other day said to me, Paul, you don't get PayPal at all. It's a declining business that nobody uses. And I'm like, nobody uses. And it's a declining business. Hmm. And it's a declining business. I'm like, revenue is going higher. Right profit's now. going higher. Uh, nobody uses it. I used it 84 times each day. Okay, like guys, I can understand you disagreeing with me, but don't make inaccurate statements like have, that. Don't have. come at me and say, nobody uses it. And somebody did defend and go, you're talking about anecdotal, like that you don't use it? Great, you don't Great. use it. I also don't drive a Tesla. Doesn't mean I sit there and say nobody uses Tesla, right? They right? Nearly record profit. I mean, the 2021, they did 800 million more in profit, but otherwise nearly record profit. Definitely record revenue. Look at their eight pillars. Everything but free cash flow. Why is the free cash flow down so much? Was it a fluke year five years ago? Let's see. Yeah, it was a fluke. Seven point two billion. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yep. Because the changes in working capital skyrocketed. So I'm not worried. So to me, this is an eight pillar company essentially. That's what I love about this because this free cash flow difference is because of a fluke year. I'm not going to punish them because they had a fluke year five years ago, and the free cash flow is down. It is down. But we'll see how it goes here. Um, that's the eight pill. Let's see what analysts are saying about the company. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's also down because it was one of those companies that literally everybody was using when it was just shopped from your computer because you weren't going to stores. So maybe it's stabilizing here and not really down because it's higher than it was going back 2017, 2018, oh, yeah. 2019 was a blip. So, you know. And look at the, look at the analysts. And this is the analysts. Take it for the grain of salt. 505 a share expected this year, 922 for 2027. That's some pretty good growth for some for a company that's dying. Revenue growth, let's see how much they're dying here. High single digits. Okay. All right. I mean, guys, let's do a stock analyzer tool. I'm going to pull up the last time I did PayPal on uh, September 25th. Mo, here are my assumptions on PayPal. You were too busy gallivanting around the world, which you've been doing a lot lately. I have. Um, what do you think of my assumptions here? Revenue growth, 4, 8, and 12. I have the same. Okay, profit margin, 12 and a half, 16 and a half, 20 and a half. I did 12 and a half, 15 and a half, 18 and a half. Okay, free cash flow, 16, 20, 24. I did 17, 20, 23. Okay, PE, I did 13, 16, and 19 for both PE and price of free cash flow. Okay, I did 16, 18, and 20 for PE and price. Is that of interesting? Free cash because flow. you actually don't think it's a moat. I mm -hmm. do think it's a moat, and I actually and went you, lower here. And I went higher, yeah. Yeah, and then desire return, 11, 13, and 15. Uh, 10, 12, and 14. Wow, you gave it better. Oh my yeah, gosh. On the high end. And yeah. Guys, I look at this saying at 59 bucks, we're close to the lowest level of, 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 of our free cash flow, just kind of free cash flow. And if I buy today at 59 and then my lowest assumptions occur, I'm still making a 10% return. I, I, I listen. So, guys, remember. The news is going to affect the way, but that's why we try to avoid the news as much as possible. We like to focus on making our own evaluation of the company. But guys, what I want you to do is I want you to realize there is a way to beat the market. It is hard, but it's mostly emotional. So if you want to learn how to do that, 
Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern time, we have a webinar on ways in which to beat the market. Remember, the hardest part about beating the market is not the numbers part. It's the emotional and psychological part. To be able to see a stock you love going down and saying, it's okay. So free webinar, click the link below, sign up Wednesday, 2 p.m. See you there. Thank you very much.